Welcome guys to our nutrition talk, our community nutrition talk, healthy meals made easy. We are so excited to talk to you today about kid approved recipes, easy recipes and easy tips to help the whole family eat healthy. My name is Nicole Coyne and the founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, where we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. Of course, we have Ashley, our director of nutrition education with us. Hello, I'm so excited for this community nutrition talk today. You know, being a busy parent, having to feed lots of kids can sometimes just feel overwhelming. So we want to give you some quick tips that you could actually use and take action when making health a way of life for you and your family. You know, Ashley, there's so much misinformation out there. It's so confusing. You know, one day something is good for you, the next day it's not. You know, you're just trying to eat the best way that you can and you know, I think more and more people have realized now is the time to really focus on your nutrition and, and stay healthy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's get to it. Sounds good. Well, I first kind of want to give you guys an idea of why we're saying make it easy. Because if you're looking to make healthy eating a way of life, you might not want to do it or follow through if it's complicated and overwhelming, if it takes a lot of time. But if we can make some simple changes to make healthy easy, eating easy, it will then become a way of life for you and your family. And I think it's so important too when we're talking about kiddos because they're watching what we're doing, right? You are the leader of your tribe and your family. So if you're eating healthy and you're being a good role model, your kid is going to follow suit. And that really sets them up for a healthy life as well. When we're talking about healthy eating, you know, some people think like they have to change everything today. And we know that if you try to change too much at one time, you're not going to be able to stick with that long term. By really focusing on only one thing at a time, simple habits that you are so confident you can stick with, it's going to help you be able to really keep those habits for the long haul. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want to make health a lifestyle and make it so we can continue to meet and achieve our health and wellness goals. So before we start talking about our tips for making eating healthy easy and making recipes that the whole family will love, let's talk about why it's important to eat healthy. Nicole, there are so many benefits that are research backed that show eating healthy, balanced meals with mostly whole foods can really set you up for success when it comes to your health and wellness. You have decreased risk of chronic disease like diabetes, heart disease. You also have more energy and better mental clarity. You're also able to handle stress better when we have a good diet foundation, as well as better sleep. Absolutely. You know, some people don't even realize how their body was intended to feel because they're so used to eating processed foods and, and they're wondering like, why do I always have energy crashes in the afternoon? Why do I wake up tired? Why do I never feel like optimal energy levels? And it really could come down to what are you fueling your body with? Right. Yeah, because we know our food is our fuel and you know, I've worked with so many families and so many busy parents and once we start implementing these simple lifestyle changes that we're going to share with you today, they'll come back to me and say, Ashley, I have a clear thought. I'm able to wake up earlier. I stay up later. I can be more active with my kids and they see those wonderful benefits of making small lifestyle changes for healthy eating. Let's start off with our very first tip. And this is so important, guys. We need to be making sure that when it comes to making healthy meals and snacks, that we are balancing our meals. So what exactly does that mean? If you guys look at your workbook, we have a great graphic that shows you how you can balance your meals. Balanced meals and snacks should have a source of protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Nicole, why is it important to have those three macronutrients in all of our meals and snacks? Well, carbohydrates give us energy, right? The main source of fuel. Fat keeps us full in, in having the, not feeling like we have those energy highs and then those energy lows. And protein is the building block of muscle. Like we need all three macronutrients. And when you're talking about eating healthy for the whole family, we really want to look at 
you know, having a balanced meal that we're not cooking three different things for every single person. Right. And if we're looking at having the same main staples and just maybe the portion sizes are a little bit different with kids versus adults, it's going to make it easy for everyone and not feel like you're having to be a short order cook, right? Yeah, absolutely. And one of our favorite tools to make sure that your meals and snacks are balanced is the plate method. So easy. It's so easy. You can use this method when you're cooking at home, when you're out to eat, or when you're on the road grabbing a snack. So here's how you do it. When you're looking at a plate, and remember, an average plate is about nine inches in diameter, we're going to want to make sure to first have one quarter of that plate be your protein. We love lean protein sources like chicken, turkey, shrimp, fish, sirloin, pork loin. There's so many options when looking at some nice lean proteins to fill up a quarter of your plate. Next, we're going to look at a quarter of our plate for starches. So starches is a word that some people get a little bit confused with because there's a lot of things that fall under a starchy category. Things like sweet potatoes or regular potatoes. Things like rices or grains or pastas. And also things that have a lot of sugar in them. So when building a balanced plate, we're going to look at having a quarter of our plate, some healthy complex starches. I love sweet potatoes and my two-year-old does too. So if I make them for myself, I'll maybe mash his up and add a little bit of butter and I'll have mine as sweet potato fries or something that I make in the oven. So it's a really great way to incorporate some delicious starches into your diet. Now let's talk about the last part of the plate and the biggest part of the plate. We're gonna wanna aim to make half of our plate non-starchy veggies. And I know what you're thinking if you have kids, Sometimes it can be a struggle for them to eat vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower, zucchini, eggplants, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. There are so many onions, mushrooms, peppers. Guys, the list is so big. So we're gonna give you some tips on how to prepare those. But one thing I wanna mention is that when it comes to picky eaters, remember, it can take kids anywhere from 12 to 15 times of trying a food before they actually determine if they like it or they don't. So don't give up. Try preparing it a different way. Try different seasonings. Get your kids involved. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the later slides. I think it's important when we're talking about picky eaters, Ashley, that you know, if you're used to your kids not eating any vegetables at all, a half of a plate, even a third of the plate is a lot. It is, yeah. So just having one spoonful at the very beginning before we put everything else on the plate so they don't get full with everything else could be a really great strategy. I remember when our kids were super, super little, their vegetables would go on the plate first with nothing else on it. Once they ate all those, then we would put the other things on the plate. Of course, naturally, for most kids, they're not wanting to eat a ton of vegetables. So we they're going to eat everything else, and then they're going to get full. Yep. Yeah, that's a great strategy. I love that idea for when introducing new foods or trying to get them to try something that they've had before and might not have liked again. Our last component to building a healthy, balanced meal is going to be fat. Now, contrary to popular belief in some things you might have read or heard on social media, fat does not make you fat. That is essential to have in your diet. It supports our brain health, our hormones, and it's so good for those growing kiddos. When it comes to fat, we're gonna look at having about one to two thumbfuls. And think about fat too, because a lot of times we use fat to cook with. For example, if we're roasting veggies, you might spray some olive oil on there. So we wouldn't really need to add any more fat to the plate there. Another tip is when you're looking at your protein, if you're consuming a higher to moderate fat protein, you want to not add any additional fat onto the plate because you're getting it along with your protein. But rule of thumb, if we're doing a lean protein, add some oil, like olive oil, coconut oil, or maybe some avocado. I love the sprayer. It really allows us to add a little bit of fat without going overboard. Because remember, a little bit goes a long way. It's the most calorically dense macronutrient. Yes, so now you guys know how to build a balanced meal. You have that awesome infographic in your workbook and the steps on how to do it. So I challenge you to practice. Practice building those balanced meals, practice building those balanced snacks, and before you know it, it will become part of your regular routine. 
You know, one of the things that I always talk about with clients when we're talking about the plate method is eat those vegetables first. For so many people, that the amount of carbohydrates that they're eating when we do the plate method, only a fourth of their plate is less than they're used to having. Mm -hmm. So if we eat our vegetables first, then our protein, and then save our starch for the end, you're going to be much more satisfied with that amount of starch. And if you're still hungry, of course, we want to eat slow because we know our brain is 15 minutes behind our belly, but go back to those vegetables, have more of those. Those contain vitamins, minerals, fiber to keep you full. More vegetables, the better. Yes. Everyone can eat more veggies. <laughs> Let's talk about our next tip. You got to make a plan. If you want to make healthy eating a way of life, you need to plan for what you're going to cook throughout the week or the two weeks, however long you go grocery shopping for. And that starts with making a plan. We love using the Family Dinner Planner at HSN, which is a great tool if you're going grocery shopping, getting the kids involved with planning meals. And you could do this at home on your own as well, too. It's just pretty simple. You have your three columns, your fat, your veggies, your protein, and you're gonna go through there and you're gonna add all of your items for your grocery list. Making sure that we're balancing our meals with those fats, carbohydrates, and the protein. So looking at making a list before you go to the grocery store will help keep you on track and plan it out for the week. I know if you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail. You know, it's so easy after a long day, especially, you know, running to work or maybe you're working from home. The last thing you want to do with having kids, everything is, is to spend so much time in the kitchen. So if you do plan and prep on the weekend, it is so much easier to set yourself up for success. If you want your kids to be bought in to eating healthy, they need to be bought into the food that they're eating. So make it a family discussion. Hey, what do you guys want to have? You know, when we're talking about planning and prepping, a lot of people think like, I have to spend all day in the kitchen. And that is not the case. What I like to do is find a protein staple. For instance, for us, one of our protein staples gets made almost every single week is pulled chicken. So easy, three ingredients, salsa verde, taco seasoning, chicken breast in the crock pot. And what you can do when you make this pulled chicken is do it on tacos, do it on a salad, do, make a burrito, make a bowl, lots of different options. Put it over sweet potato. So many different options, but we essentially made one staple protein but you don't have to eat the same boring thing every day. No, you can make one thing and then utilize it in different ways all throughout the week. Absolutely. But getting kids and families involved allows you to have the buy-in from the whole family so they don't feel like they're being forced to eat something that they don't want to eat. Yeah, and it also starts to foster that healthy relationship between kids and food, really showing them how food is fuel and why we're doing what we're doing because we want to have balanced meals to sustain us and energize us throughout the day. Now let's talk about some grocery store tips. <laughs> I know that it can be overwhelming to go grocery shopping sometimes, um, and let's just talk about our top tips when it comes to grocery shopping. My first one, don't go shopping hungry. That is a mistake that I have made time and time again. You tend to buy more than you need or not stick to your list because your stomach is growling and you're kind of going into that fight or flight mode and everything looks good. So make sure you go grocery shopping after having a balanced meal or snack. Absolutely. And then, you know, really looking at the perimeter of the grocery store, start with the vegetables and the produce. What kind of vegetables are you going to cook for the week? Roasted broccoli is a standard in our house. I'm always getting broccoli. Then we move to our meat category, grab some dairy, and then figuring out what our starch and healthy fat is going to be. Also taking an inventory of what you actually have in your fridge, in your pantry, before mm -hmm. you go grocery shop shopping so that you don't get extra stuff and end up throwing things away. Yeah, that is the worst when you forget to look and then you don't utilize something, it ends up going bad and you have to dump it. So definitely do that, great tip. My last tip for you guys when it comes to go gro going grocery shopping is shop in season and watch for sales. Usually seasonal produce is gonna be the best and highest nutrient value and it's usually easier on your wallet. So when things are in season, definitely grab and utilize those. And watch out for the sales. I know that's something that I do. So if there's a week that ground turkey is on sale, for example, and we go through a lot of ground turkey at my house, we do tacos, egg roll in a bowl, pasta sauce, you name it, burgers. Oh, we love ground turkey. So when it's on sale, I might buy a few extra pounds and put that in the freezer for later down the road. Absolutely, we do the same thing. <laughs> Now, when we talk about wanting to eat primarily whole foods, I want to kind of give you a little insight to what we're actually saying. 
whole foods are going to be those that are minimally processed to being in their most native form. So obviously fresh fruits and vegetables, that's the epitome of whole food. But whole foods can still be somewhat processed and great for you and actually be a staple in your pantry or your freezer. So let's talk about veggie. I love frozen veggies. We keep so many of those bags in my freezer. They're quick and easy. If I'm making a dinner, I have some leftover chicken, maybe have some sweet potato or regular potato on hand, and I can just grab a, a bag of mixed veggies and throw them in the oven to complete my balanced meal. Ashley, you even did something yesterday with a bag of roasted vegetables. If you guys missed the day in the life of Ashley on our Instagram channel, definitely check that out. It's on the highlight reel right above where all the pictures are posted. You did a breakfast with some frozen vegetables in it and you could not even taste it. It was so good. You wouldn't even know. I use frozen cauliflower in my morning smoothie. My two-year-old loves it. It gives it a creamy consistency, almost like a milkshake. And you're getting veggies at breakfast. I think the big thing when you're talking about vegetables is we're getting volume, Yes. right? So we're trying to fill up our stomach so that we're satisfied and we're staying full and not just having a little bit and then hungry right again, right after. So when you're adding those vegetables, especially in a smoothie, it's going to fill you up. Yes, absolutely. And finally, let's talk about canned foods because canned foods are another awesome staple. They're shelf stable. I know for us in Florida, it's great to have those shelf stable items in case hurricane season, <laughs> um, but some tips with canned food. Um, look for ones that have lower sh um, sugar if we're doing fruit or are in natural juices, and then also making sure we're draining those after we have that. And then for veggies, look for ones with lower sodium content, and again, give them a wash before we cook them to get any extra salt off of those as well too. But again, Veggies, everyone can eat more, no matter what form you have available or you need to stock up on. Veggies should always be half of our plate for lunch and dinner. So let's get into some cooking methods because this is really what I'm so excited to talk about today because cooking healthy food doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be tasteless. It can be fun and delicious. It's just understanding how we can utilize different methods to make it taste good. So one of the first things I want to talk about is your cooking skills. Making sure you're utilizing all the different things in your kitchen when it comes to cooking your meals. Stovetop is a really easy one. I know I use that a lot. Sauteing, you can use that to make some pancakes or eggs in the morning. I love using that it's quick and easy. But one of the other tools that I absolutely love is my oven. Yes. You know, and I think it's kind of underrated, especially when it comes to cooking veggies. Nicole, you talked about the roasted broccoli recipe, and that is actually linked in your workbook. It is one of our top three family favorite recipes. But roasted veggies are absolutely delicious. It took us forever to get on the roasted vegetable train. We used to just steam them, and they were kind of soggy. The kids didn't really love them, but they had to eat them, so they did. Um, Eating roasted vegetables gives it a little bit of a crunchy flavor. So if you're watching this and you're like, I don't really like vegetables, that is a really good option for you. It's a yes. delicious option. Yes, and in your workbook, we have the directions for making roasted veggies at home. It's quick, it's easy, and the kids are going to love it. Get them involved. You can change up the seasonings, add some fresh lemon juice, garlic, oregano, whatever your family likes. I know my husband loves it when I do some red pepper flakes to make things a little spicier. So you can have so much fun with roasted veggies. The goal of roasting veggies is to have that nice crunch on the outside, but still tender on the inside. Now let's talk about another strategy that's one that I actually really love to do because on a weeknight, I don't like to cook and then have a sink full of dishes. You know, that could just be overwhelming thinking of that aspect, the cleanup after the cooking, right? So my go-to is one pan meals in the oven. Here's how you do it. You're gonna pick yourself a protein like chicken or turkey or fish. You could also do um, some type of a roast. Go for a roast that's a loin, like a pork tenderloin or a sirloin roast. Next, you're going to add your veggies around it. Green beans, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, carrots. You can add whatever you like, whatever your family likes, whatever is in season. And finally, I add my starch around it. So sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, butternut squash. Or if none of those sound good for the dinner, you can cook some rice or some pasta on the side. Put the um, tray in the oven and cook at 375 until your meat is cooked all the way through. One pan meal, 
good to go, minimal dishes, that's my tip. <laughs> well, you have a recipe on the website that is one pan, the cheesy beef and broccoli bake, which yes. is one of our client's favorites. Yes, check it out. We have our uh, recipe page linked on the bottom of the workbook. We have hundreds of recipes on there, super quick and easy, family favorites, even vegetarian options, side dishes, and sweet treat options, so check it out. All right, our next tip, and this is probably one of my favorite. 100% my favorite way to cook things. It is so, so easy. We use the crock pot every single week. Yes. Guaranteed there's something going in our crock pot every single week from breakfast to pulled chicken is made every single week. It's so easy, makes so much, and then you have great leftovers. You know, one of the things that I struggle with sometimes when I'm cooking things in the oven is that it tends, it sometimes gets overcooked yeah. and then it dries out. But in the crock pot, it keeps things so moist. So if you struggle with getting things to be too dry, if you cook it in the oven, really try the crock pot. It's so, so easy. And you have leftovers. And I think leftovers are amazing because then we set ourselves up for success for a lunch or another dinner later down the line when we might not have time to cook. Leftovers are so great and crock pot leftovers are my favorite because they're so juicy. Check out the pulled chicken recipe or the balsamic pork tenderloin. That's another great one on our website. That is really good. All right, so we talked a lot about the kids, right? Making sure that we're getting our kids to try veggies and get their buy-in when it comes to the kitchen. But let's talk about a few tips when it comes to having the kids in the kitchen and how we can really start to foster that healthy relationship with food from a young age. The first one is to get them involved in the planning. When you're doing your grocery list, ask them, hey, what sounds like a good veggie you would like to try? Or what protein would you like to have this week? Was there any recipe that I made previously that you liked? Or hey, let's pull up the Healthy Steps Nutrition website recipe page and see if anything looks good for you. Next is to get them involved in the cooking, when possible. Age appropriate for sure, but even the younger kiddos can help transfer things into pots or bowls. My son will help me measure out some things sometimes. Um, they can tear herbs. And when they're older, teaching them how to cut things, teaching them how to wash the veggies, setting the table. Great way to get that introduction into the kitchen and get that healthy relationship with food started at a young age. Another great way to talk with your kids about working in the kitchen and really fostering that relationship with food is to have them be your taste tester. Kids yes. love that type of thing. Talk to them about flavors, you know, give them different things to try. What flavor do you taste there? Is it salty, sweet, sour? What would you add on this for a seasoning if you were to cook it? And finally, another great tip is get kids involved with the garden or take them to a farm. Show them where their food comes from. Maybe have an educational video about chickens and where we get our eggs from or cattle and how we get our milk. I think it's just so important to really get them involved and help them to understand that our food is our fuel and really the importance of what we put in our body to help us be sustained and have all those fun activities throughout the day. No, Ashley, a true problem in the U.S. is kids that have weight issues. More and more kids are having obesity at a such a young age, and we know the research shows us that if kids are struggling with weight at a young age, they're going to struggle when they're adults too. Yeah. So if we can start these healthy habits and healthy behaviors as a family – at a young age, it's going to be so much easier for them to transition years down the road. You no, know, I love that that strategy that you talked about. Like, hey, go to a local farm. If you guys are in South Florida, Benders yes. is awesome. We take our kids there. Strawberries, peppers, tomatoes. They have so much fun picking up different vegetables. Yeah, Owen loved the tractors too. He was like, bro, mommy, bro. <laughs> Just so much fun for any age. You know, definitely do that. Look in your local area and, you know, even looking for educational videos or things you can show them online if you're not able to get out right now. But starting that relationship and that education about food right now is really going to set them up for a successful and healthy future. If you guys go to the Healthy Steps Nutrition YouTube channel and you type in cooking demo, you're going to see a ton of cooking videos of us and our family and our kids are in quite a few of them and they are making the food with us. So check out those because those are some of our kids' favorite recipes and maybe start off by having your kids watch that and that might inspire them to want to get in the kitchen as well. Yeah, absolutely. One of my clients actually that I worked with, um, she found some really great inspiration to start cooking more at home after we started working on her health and wellness. And her seven-year-old son started getting involved. And you know what? Last year, he was on MasterChef Junior. 
What? <laughs> no way. So like, guys, it's just a really great thing. You never know what inspiration it might have and where that might take your child down the road. But I think the, the big take home point is starting that relationship and that education at a young age will really help form their future when it comes to their health and wellness. You no, know, if we're talking about starting at a young age, it really is so important that the whole family is involved. You can't just expect your kids to eat vegetables if you don't eat vegetables. And sometimes being open, like, hey, I don't really like this, but let's try it together. We're going to do this together and we're going to all be in this, you know, doing the same thing. Because if you're trying to get your kids to do something healthy and you're not practicing what you preach, it's going to be tough for them to do it. They're just going to want to do what you do. Yep. And when working with kids and in the past, you know, I was a pediatric dietitian for quite some time. We would find quite often that when the parents got involved with the children and getting them healthier and eating better, the parents saw awesome results too. I can't tell you, I worked with quite a few kids for a really long time. We had a local pediatric GI refer all of their clients to us. And every single time, I'm like, you have to be involved. You have to follow this plan too. And it was a, it was a step in the right direction. Everyone ended up seeing great results because we got the junk out of the house. And I think that's an important piece of the puzzle that we didn't really mention yet, but doing an inventory yes. of what you have in your house and really looking at the ingredients labels, looking at the nutrition facts labels, how much sugar is involved in the food that you have, you are going to be so surprised by what you find. And sometimes just getting that out of the house, removing that junk is going to help everyone stay on track. Of course, a kid is going to go to the Pop-Tarts because they're a little sugar and they taste great, mm -hmm. right? They're not going to want to go to the whole wheat waffles or the oatmeal. the oatmeal if there's other unhealthy options available. So really doing, thinking about doing a closet clean out to really pushing all the healthy food in there. So that is front and center when we look at the options that we have for the day. Yes. And then one of my other tips I have when it comes to kids, especially when you have older kids who go in the refrigerator, go in the pantry and grab what they want for a meal or snack, make sure you have those beautiful, healthy options front and center in your refrigerator, front and center in the pantry. You know, that's what I even do for my two-year-old. He can reach the second shelf on the pantry. He has a basket with all his healthy snacks in there. So making sure we have those awesome things, those veggies, those fruits, that, you know, lean meats, those beautiful, everything that you have from the farmer's market, whatever you're gonna get front and center so those kids see that and they're more apt to reach for that first. No, Ashley, I think right now people are, struggling with the fact that, hey, I, I'm at home all day. My kids are at home all day. I can't control them going into the pantry 50 times. Right. So what I did with our kids is we set a, a schedule and I have it on a dry erase board and we plan out even their meals and snacks so that, you know, it's easy to mindlessly go into the pantry. It's so easy when it's right there. So really planning out not just your meals, but your family's meals so that everyone stays on track is a really great tip. Yeah, and you know, so many kids are going to be homeschooling this, this school year. So yeah, keeping them on that schedule will really help as well as yourself. So let's see if anyone has any questions, guys. This, this community nutrition talk is for you. We hope that you have taken something away from this. And I really encourage you to pick one actionable step to start doing from this talk, whether it's to start looking at balancing your meals, or maybe you need to start planning your grocery store tip, trip, or maybe you're looking at getting some more veggies into you and your family's diet. I want you to pick one actionable step from this community nutrition talk, and I want you to make an effort to implement it into your routine. And I think it's so easy to want to go all in and just focusing on one thing at a time is going to be so much more effective for the long haul. And I always like to add things in instead of take things away. Yeah. So let's just add more vegetables in and see how you do. We have a couple of questions that come in, came in. One, actually, what is a really easy on the go breakfast option? Like I'm struggling, I, I'm trying to run out the door. What's an easy on the go breakfast option? So one of my favorite actually recipes on healthy steps nutrition is the double chocolate overnight oh. oats. That one is delicious. You can make it ahead, stick it in the fridge. You can stick it in your car, in your drink holder and eat it while you're on the road if you want. But that is a great one. Kids love it too. And then one of my go-tos because I honestly am not normally a breakfast person. I'd rather have like a smoothie. So I do a chocolate peanut butter smoothie. 
I do a banana, some frozen cauliflower, a scoop of protein, a little bit of peanut butter, and some almond milk. And it's delicious and it keeps me nice and full until my morning snack. If we're doing smoothies, let's talk about this for a little bit. Because so many smoothies are like loaded with a ton of fruit oh, yeah. and then that's it. Especially kids' smoothies. Yep. So and commercial smoothies are the worst. Commercial smoothies are bad. <laughs> so what could we do here? Like we really want to think about having protein. So if you don't want to add protein powder to your smoothie, what could we do? Well, if you don't like to do protein powder, you can look at adding something else to your breakfast that's not necessarily in your smoothie. You might want to eat um, a piece of Canadian bacon or have a hard boiled egg, but making sure we are getting that protein is so important. Same thing with goes with um, oatmeal. If you have a child who really likes oatmeal for breakfast and you're worried about them having protein, add some egg whites in there. That's a really great tip. Egg whites in the oatmeal definitely works. Mm -hmm. It just makes things fluffy, but doesn't change the flavor. No. Another thing that I like to do is the plain Greek yogurt is loaded with protein mm -hmm. or even getting the low sugar Greek yogurt. Yes, there's a little bit of carbs in there, but there is a lot of protein. So adding some Greek yogurt to your smoothies could be a really good option. Think about just having one serving of fruit. We don't need a ton of fruit. That's a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar, even though it's natural. Don't want to be mindful about how much fruit we have. Add in some vegetables. I knew you put frozen cauliflower yesterday, but a lot of times you do frozen spinach in yours. Yes, frozen spinach. I also sometimes do um, like mixed veggies, whatever I have in my freezer, I kind of throw in there, but you can't taste it. It's so delicious. And you're getting veggies at breakfast, which most people don't. Absolutely. Another question came in, but while we're going to answer this one, um, go ahead and type in the chat if you have any questions. And if you are watching this recording, awesome. Send us any questions. We're happy to answer them. Another question, my kids, what are some balanced snacks? Because so many snack options are just loaded with carbohydrates. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Snacks are really targeted for that convenience option. And when we see a lot of these convenient snack foods are loaded with sugar and trans fats and carbohydrates and are not balanced. In fact, a lot of the bars that are marketed as snack bars and healthy actually are very low in protein and not balanced. So looking at doing a snack, I encourage you to make something at home. And one of my favorite ones are turkey roll-ups. Those are so good. Um, you did a turkey roll-up with cucumber and some spreadable cheese and yesterday. And paired it with a half a cup of strawberries. So good. Mm -hmm. No, I did um, turkey with avocado rolled up yesterday. It was delicious. So you can do so many different things with turkey roll-ups or ham and cheese roll-ups just to get the protein, add some fat in there, and then you're just going to have those carbs on your on the side. Other thing that you could do is hard-boiled eggs with some fruit, um, maybe even some Greek yogurt with a couple chocolate chips in it. That's what I personally do. Yeah. Another one I love to do is the HSN avocado tuna salad, and I'll put that on a brown rice cake. Awesome. Lots of different options. I think the main point of this is you have to spend a little bit of time in the kitchen to get creative to really figure out what you and your family like. And I can't stress the importance enough about planning and prepping your, your meals because it is so easy to fall off or order takeout or go out when you yeah. don't have a plan. The last thing you want to do at the end of the day is to spend an hour in the kitchen. So if you set yourself up for the week on the weekend, with some staples and even getting some freezer staples just in case <laughs> you run out, which has happened to us many times, but having some freezer staples so that you can stay on track and really set yourself up for success. Yeah, definitely all the great tips. So if there's not any other questions. I don't think so. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, uh, we would love to help you. Also, we have a free Facebook group that we provide free help in all the time. Always post these recordings in there. Our goal and our mission is to empower people to take control of their health through a simple habit-based approach. And you know, providing this free help allows communities to understand the misinformation out there and cut through the noise because there's so much money spent on advertising and marketing foods. And a lot of times it's not the healthiest option for you. So let's take a step back. Let's really figure out how can we focus on whole foods and just focus on one step at a time. So you really see sustainable results. Cause you know, if you're not consistent, you're not going to see results. Yeah. And I, we always say the journey to health and wellness is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You want these 
habits and these lifestyles to last for the long term to be successful and to really reach your health and wellness goals. We really hope that you guys enjoyed our webinar today and we really hope that you can take away one actionable step to help making easy meals a part of your family's lifestyle. Bye guys.